10 seconds. 10 seconds remaining. What's up guys and welcome back to the Battle of Central Europe Season 3. We are in the Losers Semis, which means that the winner of this goes to face Virtus Pro Polar and then the winner of that goes to the Grand Finals and wow, basically unknown, going to start things off early with something a little bit interesting, but they are going to be going up against Lions in a best of three. I'm Mike Loris, I got Grandis here as well and man, I don't think I've ever seen Tusk first pick outside of Screen Squad Moscow 5 International. This should be interesting. Definitely, and even Screen Squad or Moscow 5 International, as they're known now, don't first pick it usually. It's usually a staple second pick for them, or second stage pick, rather. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how they utilize it. Up against Brewmaster, you can waste a lot of Brew's time uh, during that split by, split by throwing people inside the snowball. So I quite like the approach, but I don't know. I think just going for the more stable Scarf Mage definitely is, as I already said, more stable. Um, but Tusk, a lot of fun to see, so I can't really complain. Yeah, it's uh, definitely one of the more fun heroes to see in this game. And as far as building around the Tusk, I would think that when you pick up a Tusk this early, you're going to be building a very aggressive lineup and trying to have the roaming power, the early game power of Ice Shards be kind of the centerpiece of your entire draft. With the Razor to start things out, it's not exactly going to be that just yet, but it still can certainly get like that. Uh, a hero like Jakiro, I think, is someone that basically unknown could have really wanted, but clearly that's not going to be the case. Him being banned out along with the Ogre Magi, Magoma has like 80% multicast rate, and then Venge, Lycan being banned out on the other end, then Timbersaw, Puck hitting the bin. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, the Timbersaw ban is actually pretty interesting, coming up from basically Five unknown. Scared of Lions going for a very heavy damage lineup, between Witch Doctor as well as Timbersaw, you could bring down Brilliant targets very quickly. Um, but outside of that, nothing too telling from either sides of the lineup. Tidehunter is yet to be touched um, from either team, and that would probably fit pretty nicely with Lions or even for basically unknown. Just having more AoE team fight isn't a bad thing by any means. Um, but yeah, as you said earlier, the Jakiro would have been really nice for basically unknown. Outside of the um, aggression that Jakiro could offer, um, maybe we get to see some other peculiar supports. Venomancer, but instead it's going to be a Disruptor. More lockdown for Brewmaster. Yeah, they're going to make sure to pick up answers. Right now, Disruptor's really the only one. Snowball, Walrus Punch, you can't really count those as disables as far as keeping the Brewmaster off of his ultimate. But yeah, I like the Tidehunter here for Lions quite a bit. Combos with Witch Doctor makes their team perhaps a little bit reliant on huge uh, cooldowns, but hey, if you could work around that, then you're going to be pretty happy that you did. Broodmother, now Visage, all getting banned Ten out. So we have a couple more of these uh, weirder heroes being banned and pick in this stage Five for basically seconds. unknown I honestly don't know where the tusk fits in here it seems like that he's just thrown in time. kind of randomly whereas the Trupter Razor versus Brewmaster just for general laning purposes seems to make a lot more sense yeah I think that's fair to say um, tusk is kind of an, a weird hero to analyze um, since we don't get to see him very often and Usually he is kind of just thrown into the lineup, offering some nice defensive utility with the snowball, as well as aggression early on, but outside of that, there's nothing really... I don't know, teams don't build around him very often. For Lions now, um... Oh dear, I completely forgot what I was going to say. Um... Well, that's awkward. Either way, um, there's still plenty of good supports left into the pool. Scarath Mage uh, might be an option for uh, Lions, although not as much for basically unknown. Uh, just having any more control would be wonderful for them. Hmm, we are also assuming that Tusk is going to be played as a four-position support, which is usually how he's played, although the sample size isn't that large. It is possible that they decide to lane him slightly differently. What do you think? I would love to see a core Tusk, but honestly, as far as how effective that would be, um, still yet to be seen. Um, Slark going to be the choice for Lions. Um, but yeah, thoughts on core Tusk? Honestly, I don't have very many. I think he kind of functions well in a tri lane where none of the heroes really excel with farm, and you're just kind of getting early arcane boots um, or phase boots, whatever. But yeah, I, I'm not exactly sure why you'd give him extra farm. An early blink dagger would be wonderful, I suppose. Yeah, that would be pretty interesting, but up against a Slark, I would say the core Tusk, if that was ever a possibility, is a little bit less appealing now. A Slark, just such a difficult hero to lock down, and Tusk isn't exactly a lockdown hero. Disruptor kind of is, Static Storm fantastic against Slark, and Glimpse is also pretty darn good, but outside of that, basically Unknown are going to have a pretty difficult time dealing with this hero. They need to split their CC also between the Slark Brewmaster and hold something in reserve just for the Death Ward later on, so... 
could get a little bit uh, messy for basically unknown unless they pick up some more CC. But as far as core heroes still with CC, I mean, the pool is always there. Maybe they could pick up a Zeus and just try to take the burst route and just say screw crowd control effects. But uh, I don't know. For basically unknown, it already seems like they are on the receiving end of this draft as the tusk is just so weird. And well, I guess you might as well get more effects that make you untargetable. So. If we see a Phoenix with an Agadims in this game and a Snowball, then I just don't know what's going on anymore. How does that actually interact with each other? I don't know. That would be fun to see. But I don't think it honestly, does interact. I, I don't think it does. I don't think you can do anything with that. Yeah, but unless it, it's completely bugged. It would still be sweet bugged. to see, like, <laughs> half of the team in a Snowball and the other half in a Supernova just right next to each other and Lions are just confused. I, I, that would be great. <laughs> Either way, I don't think Phoenix is going to be fixing any of basically Unknown's problems with their draft, or at least really lending them towards any particular direction. Already, Phoenix um, doesn't look to have the greatest of landing stages. Um, up against H. Eppers from Witch Doctor Slark, I'm not sure Phoenix is going to be able to get that enough out of that lane, especially if Phoenix is laned as an off laner. I just don't really feel the hero that much. If your lane doesn't work out, you're pretty much spending the whole game playing catch up, and that's just not a situation that Phoenix thrives in. And this right-click damage alone is just going to be so dangerous from the Lion side. Not to mention the lockdown that they have. It's not the most, but it's certainly enough to kill out the Phoenix with the amount of burst potential that they do have. So Phoenix is, I would also say here, that you need to be having a good start with. Otherwise, you're going to be having a very poor time. And it's kind of the same story for the Tusk. You really need to have a good start or else you're going to be pretty much useless. So a lot is hinging upon the early game start of Basically Unknown. They're going to get the Storm Spirit banned out from them, one of their bread and butter heroes. And then they're going to ban out the Tide Hunter finally, that we mentioned a million years ago. But for Basically Unknown, their right-click damage isn't really that high. Um, I'm hoping for a surprise here. I mean, they already have Phoenix and Tusk. I guess they could go deeper into the weird hero pool. Let's see, as far as deeper into the weird hero pool um, is concerned, nothing immediately comes to mind. That It would fit into basically Unknown's lineup. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see where they go about this. As far as lanes are concerned, it's presumably going to be mid Razor versus the Brewmaster, which does ensure a pretty nice lane situation for aforementioned Razor. Phoenix could be solo safe lane versus whoever Lions throw to the off lane, which is probably their last pick as well. Um, what that is is still yet to be seen, but out of the standard offlaners, Phoenix can handle most of them, and it's going to be an anti-mage last for basically unknown. Some late game insurance for them, but I don't really feel that their lineup really is cohesive. Yeah, I was thinking more along the lines of Terror Blade for them, just to have so many ways of keeping the Terror Blade safe and keep him firing. Anti-mage, I suppose, kind of does a similar thing, but, uh... I mean, Lions, they also don't have that much lockdown either. It's something that we haven't really mentioned. Versus Phoenix and anti you're going to need a little bit more right now. They only really have Paralyzing Cask that's reliable. Everything else that they have can be dodged or evaded in some way, shape, or form by the remaining. heroes of Basically Unknown that have mobility. So this anti -mage pick is definitely nice in the regard that it is good against what Lions have as far as Lions can't go offensive versus the anti -mage. Still don't exactly know how this is going to pan out. I would assume it's just an anti-mage tri-lane with Tusk and Disruptor. Phoenix and Razor each taking their solo lanes, but uh, yeah, I don't know. If you pick up a Tusk this early, I don't feel like they've actually built around the Tusk at all. I feel like they just have a Tusk in their lineup. No Lions going to really heavily shore up their single target lockdown with the Doom. And I quite like this pick. I'm not sure basically Unknown really have tools that they can use to put pressure on this Doom early to punish him in the laning stage, or at least to a point where Doom is going to be shut down, which is really hard to do, in fact, um, because of just the mechanism of Devour to keep you inside the game. Tusk Disruptor, they can zone a little bit up against the Doom, but not enough. He's going to be staying on the creep wave for the majority of this time, then come mid-game. If Anti-Mage gets doomed or Phoenix gets doomed, they're more or less useless heroes. And that's uh, pretty much the purpose of the Doom, and usually we see Dooms being shut down pretty hard early on. Is He's pretty vulnerable just to range, right-click, poking, harassment, that kind of stuff. In this type of landing situation, maybe they even want to put the Anti-Mage solo versus Doom and Ten just try to play it super remaining. greedy like that. I don't really know how that would benefit or hurt their other lanes, but uh, it is a possibility. Anti-Mage versus Doom, typically a pretty good matchup, but I don't really know if it's good enough for basically unknown. Um, the Doom is certainly the hero that Lions needed, though. It's the crowd control effect on the core, something that is not too common to see. And as far as shutting down the unknown heroes, they really needed that effect. So it's a decent enough pickup for them, and 
overall, I don't really want to say this just because it kind of goes against everything I believe in, but Lions have a better draft. I would love to see the Tusk and Phoenix draft be better, but it just isn't right now. Um, apparently, Magoma is AFK. Who knows why? God damn it, Magoma. It's time for the game to start. It's start time. We started this game early, so I suppose, you know, we have we have to like pay that karma time back or something. Oh, hey, he's graced us with his presence, so we can actually go ahead and introduce our team. So on the rating side, it's going to be basically known unknown or aftershock um is the name they started this tournament off with farming in the safe lane it's going to be mind control on the anti-mage for now mid is going to be slavi on the razor offlane phoenix played by kefka and our supporting duo of disruptor and tusk by zoroji and magoma and for the lion side jonas and fan is going to be playing the doom uh that's not a hero that's a courier eight mother is going to be playing the e brewmaster over towards the mid lane handskin is going to be on the ancient apparition supporting up top with seal kids witch doctor and they're both going to be supporting era's slark it looks like it's going to be pretty standard stuff as far as the lanes are concerned i don't think any of us expected anything else but this the question is how much is this tusk actually going to roam is he going to roam at all Disruptor roaming isn't really the best, so maybe Magoma on the Tusk is going to be playing a very much so passive pulling sort of role, and I don't really know if Tusk is the hero to do that. I feel like it's better if you just always go around with Ice Shards and try to get kills. It definitely feels that way. He's going to be kind of nice defensively come the mid game, especially if he is able to just get away with pulling non-stop to get that um, experience up. Um, but still, I think that role could be served better by most other support heroes, or defensive support heroes in that case. Um, Dazzle, Earthshaker come to mind? Yeah, I mean, those heroes definitely get the job done, and it's going to be already a bad start for Kafka as he has his Observer Ward destroyed by Handskin. So this Phoenix is going to be flying blind, and as we mentioned before, Phoenix is not exactly the best hero in this lane to start things off with. Having no vision just adds a cherry to the really bad tasting cake and makes it a little bit worse, I suppose. You probably don't add a cherry to that because it makes it better, but you know, you get what I mean. Kafka's not going to have a good time up here, and though he does have Icarus Dive level 1, I would also not be surprised to see him give first blood. Yeah, neither would I, just because of the raw power of Chilling Touch at these early levels, especially against a Phoenix, who so has very low amounts of HP to start things off. And even with the Ring of Protection, he's only seeing it to three armor that that gives. Um, as far as mid lane is concerned, that should be um, in favor of basically a known Razor should have a fine time, but already Kefka dropping low, trying to trade hits with Seal Kid. Just not a fight he can win. Kefka is completely zoned out and might actually be giving up first blood. Drops the Icarus Dive, drops a 30 HP, already forced to use his salve. Which Doctor... That cost him like one tango at the very most. He's down 150 HP. He does have technically less armor than the Phoenix, but plus 10 base damage in those trades. Kefka should have very quickly realized that this was not a damage trade that he was going to be coming out ahead upon or even getting any sort of favorable engagement at all. So honestly, don't really know why the Phoenix kept on with that. It was very dangerous. Like He was so close to dying, and if he died like that... That is pretty much the most embarrassing death you could possibly have ever, except for like blinking into a black hole or something like that. But that's probably not going to happen in this game. No black holes in the field. Either way, the laning stage, don't really think it's going to be going that great for unknown. Slavi over in mid, as you said, it Mother, not really having the best of times, but with the Drunken Haze, you will be okay. Fortunately for unknown, I guess Mind Control is having a very easy time. 3v0 as Doom is forced out rather early. I don't think he was pressured back that much, but just going to uh, take farm where he can get it. He wasn't getting that much in bottom lane anyway. Yeah, and that's fair enough. It is a move that Doom can do and does quite often. The ability for their supports to get some experience in bottom is fairly limited. Ancient Apparition and Witch Doctor are incredibly immobile um, as far as supports are concerned. The Invis rune bottom is going to be picked up by the Tusk, potentially opening up for a gank onto mid. Um, we'll just have to see. It has to be a really good Ice Shards block if they kill Fate Mother. Or he just plays super aggressive. That also could happen. Yeah, with Razor and his ability to steal damage, if they somehow pin Ape Mother to a wall or something like that, then well, most of the time it'll be a kill, but especially this time it's a kill that they probably need. Phoenix doing some pretty fancy stuff over on top lane, used Icarus Dive to grab the Bounty Rune and then got himself back to safety with just that skill, so that was pretty darn sweet. Still don't know if it's worth picking the hero for, but uh, certainly it's very flashy. Magoma's going to keep himself hidden on the mid lane for now. Slavi's going to start with the damage drain. That's not really going to work, so that means no kill potential is there. However, he's going to go looking for Jonas and Fan. He probably should have been doing this a long time ago. He's going to run to the Doom, who's getting roughed up by Wolves. Snowball, if this lands, or just Ice Shards, this is a kill. 
easiest kill of Magoma's life. Wolves doing most of the heavy lifting there, and Tusk is going to grab first blood, although I think Doom probably just didn't expect that. So the first blood is uh, any hero could have gotten that, not the Tusk. Yeah, I think they just expected the Tusk to be over pulling in the side, and that's something that they don't have vision over at all since the Doom um, didn't get a word out to start things off. He's still holding that inside his inventory. He's going to place it over on the high ground. Um, but yeah, the Tusk was missing because of their lack of map vision, and you don't expect an Invis Tusk to walk from bottom all the way over here and to kill you over at that camp. Kafka over towards top lane. 16 HP, he survives. Icarus Dive once again saving his skin, but... The damage up on this top lane, just with a couple of right clicks being amplified by Chilling Touch, way too high for the Phoenix to sit in. Now Zerogen, bottom lane, gonna be chased down by Jonas Fan, but here comes Snowball. Scorched Earth will kill off the Disruptor Ice Shards, though, will block off Jonas Fan's escape. He has that regeneration still working, though, so he's not even going to die right now. Doom, dying to the Tusk, yet going back to the bottom lane and killing the Disruptor. I didn't see how that one started because of Phoenix's situation up towards top, but even though the Doom did end up giving first blood, he's just doing so much better than the Phoenix right now. He really is. I think it was just trading hits with the Disruptor, and it was a fight the Disruptor couldn't win in that case, so... Um, yeah, Joe Sunfan's going to be doing just fine. Level 4, almost level 5, he's going to be sitting on that 4-minute rune, although those already picked up um, by Unknown Side and Illusion for the Tusk. Um, but yeah, the Doom is having a lot better time than the Phoenix. His immediate impact's going to be greater. Once he gets at level 6, there's killing potential for Phoenix, even if he um, was leveling at the same rate the Doom was, which he is, and currently only level 2.5. It's going to be delayed, what he's actually able to accomplish this game. Yeah, and this is pretty much what I see from Phoenix's most of the time when he's picked up. He's not the most common pick, but we still see teams kind of experimenting with him. I've been thoroughly underwhelmed at what Phoenix can do. Even when he does get a fully exploded supernova, it doesn't seem like it's going to be winning them any fights directly. So, so far I'm underwhelmed at this hero's performance, not just in this game, in Dota in general. Hopefully we're going to see it pan out eventually, but... Just based off of this Phoenix's start, I don't think this is the game for it. Seal Kids once again wrapping around, opening with the cask. Just look at the damage from just a couple right clicks. Kefka has to Icarus dive away yet again. I don't exactly know how many salves he's burned through, but at this point, it's at least two plus a stack of tangos, and I would assume a lot more regeneration just because he is keeping himself pretty healthy. Yeah, he hasn't been able to purchase up those Tranquil Boots either, so it is just consumable region that he's been burning through. Bottom lane is being pressured pretty heavily by the Radiant Squad, as Mind Control, left alone since the Doom goes back into the jungle after picking up that Disruptor kill, um, is going to be able to pick that up. And the Anti-Mage is farming incredibly well, still sitting on his sub, um, currently Power Treads, enough money to pick up his Ring of Health should he need to, up towards top to get the pounce on the Kefka, but that doesn't stop Icarus Dive, so he's able to make himself scarce. But still, Kefka still hasn't ticked level 3. This is going to be a very sad Phoenix for a long time. And really, Phoenix doesn't have any contingency plans either. We, we already saw the Doom go into the jungle and get a little bit of cash there. Phoenix can't really do that. Fire Spirits level 1 is not going to be clearing any jungle camps anytime soon. Maybe if he finds like a really easy camp to clear, but satyrs or kobolds or something like that, but that's not going to give you that much either. So. Right now, Unknown, they're basically working with just three heroes. Roji, pretty relevant right now, is a level 4 Disruptor, Tusk level 4, and Razor, of course, is a powerhouse at this stage in the game, but he's also just doing his best to last hit. He is out last hitting 8 Mother, which is to be expected in this type of lane, but this Razor, though he is doing fantastically, he needs to j just do so much better given the state of his team. Magoma and Zoroji, they're going to grab a smoke, and it looks like they're going to make their first rotation of the game, and it looks like it will be going towards mid or they'll be running into the Doom. That's also good, I suppose. Ice Shard's completely blocking out Jonas and Fan now. It's fight or try to panic run. He's going to run up against those Ice Shards, but with level 3 Scorched Earth, he's not going down anytime soon. This damage combo of these two heroes is just so darn low and unknown. Don't really have any way of working around that. They just don't have damage with these support heroes. Yeah, especially not until level 6. Once you have your Static Storm as well as your Walrus Punch, you can do a decent amount of damage, but even then, um, Doom might not have died if he was sitting at a similar level uh, comparable to those two supports in that case. Um, even though Anti-Mage is farming well, his immediate impact also is going to be very limited. They rotate up the Tusk towards top, um, but still haven't really seen this hero accomplish much, even though he is leveling decently. Basically unknown, are kind of all banking on this Anti-Mage to do well, and that's all fine and good, but up against a Doom, as well as a Slark that's getting untouched farm as well, Ira now sitting on the hand of Midas, as well as a couple hundred gold in the bank, is going to be doing quite a lot of work. Smoke coming out from basically unknown, I believe that was spotted out by a Dire Observer Ward, so I don't think it's really going to accomplish much. And there's not that many levels here worth of heroes 
for the basically unknown side. So even if the smoke wasn't seen, their chances of killing Ira is so so slim they don't have the crowd control for it because they don't have level six they might run into seal kid now that's a kill they could take there's the icarus dive forward plus the snowball getting in the front with the fire spirits cast not bouncing because everyone else was still in the snowball seal kid with his level one regen not quite going to be enough and they do get a kill in the end it's not really the kill that they wanted but i think at this point beggars can't be choosers they're gonna be very happy that they got something especially the phoenix and uh hey it's a kill and that's really all they wanted in the end i suppose yeah, even so, I think it's not really what they need to get back into this game, even though it is going to be worthwhile to smoke and get a kill at this point. Um, right now, this Razor, not building towards anything immediately, as Phase Boots as well as a Wraith Ban. What build do you think Slavi should go for to kind of get them out of this rut? Hmm, well, BKB probably not going to be the build for Razor. It's usually a split between do we go for Mech on the Razor or do we go for Aghanim Scepter. I think getting the mech just to play things a little bit more defensively, keeping your heroes alive is probably going to be a little bit better this game. The odds of Unknown actually being close to the enemy towers to try to pressure them with the Aghanims is very, very slim. And as far as Aghanims killing off your enemy heroes, it takes a little bit too long. It's a little bit too slow. So I think Razor should play this pretty much as slow as he possibly can. Everyone from Unknown needs to just slow this game down and hopefully just buy time for the Anti-Mage. Maybe even that a Midas, actually. Yeah, I, I think that's a decent choice as well. Jonas Sunfan currently smoked up with his level of 6. Might put an end to Slavi's life here. Just with the Doom, they might be able to kill him off. There's the Doom. Paralyzing cast bounces through, and Slavi in a whole heap of trouble. They bring in Ape Mother from the sidelines. Has a split if needed, and that TP is going to be immediately cancelled. Slavi is going to burn down. And that was actually two TPs cancelled. Someone was thinking about going to the tier 2, and that didn't pan out either. So it's a very easily done kill for the Lions, and they don't have the mo most pushing power in this mid lane, but with only a Razor Illusion to defend, actually, it's pulling off the aggro, so maybe they're not going to get this tower anyway, so Hero Razor Illusion, I suppose, but it's not going to be the end of the action, because Doom is also heading up towards top lane, where Kefka is going to have to use his Icarus Dive to escape pretty darn soon. He's going to pop the Fire Spirits, Ira is going to ward him away, but I guess the M Fire Spirits do pull off the aggro once again. Unknown, they're, uh, not really getting too much done right now, but they're defending their towers. They're going to teleport Slavi up to the top lane. Big fight brewing up towards top, but there is a split, and they're walking into a squad of five heroes. Seal Kid going to take the brunt of the damage to start things off. He will take the shards, and he will survive, but no. Phoenix running through. We'll get one more right click, and we'll get the kill. Slavi, though, is going to try to man fight Jonas Fan. The split rock is going to come through. Kill off the Razor, also getting the Cyclone onto the Phoenix. Dispel him down. Not going to happen just yet. In fact, they're going to fall back and go for mind control. Teleported into here. That's not really where you want to be as an anti He's going to have to straight blink out of there. Is there anything else? To lock him down looks like there isn't everyone else from lions are going to back off they just get the razor kill they use a split for it and they might lose a couple on the retreat jonas fan caught the ice shards and the tower he's going to try to get around the tower but i don't know that if that's going to work cast going to fly through as mana void does fly doesn't really do that much our eight mother trying to teleport out straight from the tower and is going to make it out alive in the meantime jonas fan running out from kefka and zoroji might also make his escape although it's going to be a very close one gets glimpsed back and will be brought down now era is in the middle of a whole bunch of unknown heroes he is completely out of mana trying desperately to tread switch ice shards it's not going to catch him. In fact, it'll wall off unknown. So they're going to let everyone else get away. After all said and done, I believe that was more or less an even fight. Although, Lions probably should have gotten the upper hand on that one because they did have split. Yeah, it was uh, kind of an awkward split. wasn't really in the middle of a lot of enemy heroes. And they go for the Grudeer play, trying to kill off that anti mage And it almost works out for them. Um, but Brewmaster didn't have any backup and AM was able to blink out. So could have been really good for Lions, but ends up not being as good as it could have been um yeah anti-mage working towards this battle fury is going to have it and lucky enough for him he didn't die in that last engagement and really is the glimmer of hope for basically unknown the razor's farming decently and right now it looks like a drum spilled for slavi which is also decent if you're looking to fight but basically unknown it kind of feels like already mind control is the only hero that really matters and that's not a good situation to be in 12 minutes into the game. Hopefully the Disruptor picking up his level 6 is going to give Unknown a little bit more of a bump of power, but as powerful as Static Storm is, Blink Dagger Brewmaster is, I would say, a little bit more consistent and a little bit more powerful in general. So a big item pickup for the Lion side and a Blink Dagger Brewmaster in that last fight could have just so easily won them the fight, and I'm sure it will win them fights down the line. But for right now, Unknown, I think they have to be happy with what they got and the fact that they didn't get completely destroyed there. Kefka is well on his way to his level 6, and those Fire Spirits doing quite a bit of damage. Just inherently, they do a lot of damage, and of course the attack speed's slow, not to be underestimated either. 
once he gets that supernova, it's probably not going to be stunning anyone or not going to be a huge flashy ultimate, but if he forces some attention away from... Oh no, he's going to Icarus dive in a circle because he got doomed halfway. Poor, poor Phoenix. Well, his level 6 is going to be delayed even more. In chat for Shinacha kill, and they get the level 6 on hand skin, or at least had it um, for that kill on top of it all. Lions, they've been using this Doom cooldown pretty effectively, and that's going to be really close to Jonas Sunfans Midas um, on top of it all. Lions are going to be sitting on double Midas for the team, even though Anti Mage farms incredibly fast. Keeping up against Devour as well as two hands of Midas is incredibly difficult for your side, and Jonas Sunfans is going to be able to put that gold to good use. A Blink Dagger, eventually Aghanim Scepter, potentially, um, for this Doom. Lions, mother, they have to use his split in mid, and I yeah. don't really know what happened. Top tower is Nothing happened. Attack. No, I Dyer's don't think it was. I was about to look attack. at that, and he just kind of split for nothing, it really felt like. Okay, well, I guess you uh, gotta give the enemies a little bit of handicap sometimes, but he's going to get set up with the Ancient Apparition Ice Blast, decide not to go for Magoma Radiant's in the end. Antimage does have his Battle Fury up with Power Treads 14 minutes in, and that's a pretty nice timing for him. He's going to clear off a couple stacks in the jungle and really start ramping up his farm right now. He is leading the way as far as farm is concerned, but I don't know if Antimage is going to be the hero that they really need to get a whole lot of farm. Unknown at this point, they really want to split the farm a little bit, but just because they have Doom on the other end, but they have no choice right now. Mind Control is going to be getting really big, and Jonas and Fan has a pretty clear course of action right now. In those fights, you doom the anti-mage, and you don't do anything else. Oh dear. Uh, looks like we have some sort of server troubles, or um, some sort of DC or lag issue from either side. Hopefully that sorts itself out. Um, huh. Gonna ult him. Who's What's ulting? going on? No one should be ulted anyone. Is there an Ancient Apparition blast out? No, there isn't. He's just messing. <laughs> I, I would think so. Pause, except it's not really tactical. Fake tactical. Fake tactical. It, it's all mind games. I mean, Zoroji is pretty low, but it's a level 1 Ancient Apparition Ice Blast. I don't think that would be lethal on him. Um, Razor, potentially? It would have to be like on top of him now. Yeah, and it's not going to it's going to take a little bit too long. Although, A-Mother can blink in, clap, and whack Razor once. That will be very close to killing Razor. So, Slavi should probably decide to run right about now. And I just noticed that, for Unknown, Phoenix has most of their kills. Like, I don't know how that actually happened, but it did happen. I assume it's just Fire Spirits. I, I saw he stole one of them with, like, an auto attack, but outside of that, I think it's just Fire Spirits. That's very peculiar, at least to me. It doesn't really feel like the Phoenix has been doing that much work, but his KDA says otherwise. Yeah, doesn't really feel like he deserves those kills, but you know what? If you get those kills as Phoenix, it's going to help him recover just a little bit more, and it looks like now that he has hit level 6, he has a little bit more safety. Also is going to be going for a mech, it looks like. A mech with a Sage's Mask. So I don't really know what the deal is there, but Kafka's going to get obliterated in mid. Oh man, double blink right on top of an ice blast. <laughs> poor, poor Phoenix. He did not know it hit him. No, blink pounce, blink thunderclap. It's already a lot of damage onto the Phoenix. They didn't really need that ice blast, but it drops on top of him anyway. He was gone in no time flat, which is pretty impressive. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what this mech buildup is. I thought he was going for medallion, but he backs off for the headdress, so maybe it's just a casual Sage's mask. I mean, it's... Uh... I guess nice to have that additional bit of mana. Phoenix generally isn't too mana starved, as long as you don't completely spam out your fire spirits, but who knows? It could turn out to be all those items eventually, but I don't really think he has the luxury of building up poorly right now. Has to be economical in his usage of his limited gold, but him and Magoma are going to be going up towards the top lane to try to kill off this AA. They have the Walrus Punch, they have the Supernova. The Creep Wave, unfortunately, isn't really working out for them, so this is going to be a little bit more difficult than it really should be, but they see Sil Kid. Magoma going to put a couple in the snowball, go for Handskin, Walrus Punch, and now the Supernova. Handskin is going to roast. This will be a kill. However, is there going to be any return kill? Magoma is going to try to be out of way, and he will make it home safety. In the meantime, Kefka going to start his TP. Is there a stun? No, there isn't. They get out with everyone, and that's a perfectly worthwhile usage of Supernova right there. You get what you can get. And in the meantime, they lose the Disruptor over towards mid, so it's not even going to be a clean kill for Unknown. It's a trade. 
Yeah, which is unfortunate for them. I think that was just the Slark um, killing off the Disruptor. I didn't actually see that engagement, so I um, can't really say for sure what happened. Um, but Brewmaster does pick up the last hit, which is pretty nice for them. Doom off of cooldown, and within this rune, Jonas Sunfan looking for an opening. He might find it on the Anti-Mage. Um, right now, Blink Away is going to keep AM safe, and it would just be the Doom solo, so not the easiest of kills there. I don't think Doom can kill off the Anti-Mage solo. He does have three points in Spell Shield, so... Though the Doom is crippling to the Anti-Mage, it's not really going to be doing the most damage right now. He needs some help at the very least, but 5-6, to six, Lions doing okay in this game. Their advantage isn't really that high, as the gold net worth is only 1,500 in their favor, only about 3,000 experience in their favor, but it just feels like they have the better heroes for this stage in the game. As unknown, they haven't really done anything early on with this Tusk, at least nothing that really too, feels too substantial. He has been involved in all five kills, so I guess there is that to consider. But it doesn't really feel like he's started any of those fights. It's just he's been in them. Yeah, he has had a couple of nice ice shard blocks, but uh, mm -hmm. outside of that, there there really hasn't been anything super special. They do have a smoke on the um, tusk, and they do have the disruptor ultimate available, so maybe they can find an opening even on this brewmaster if they're able to bring him down inside the duration of that storm. Seventeen seconds on cooldown for brewmaster ulti. Unfortunately, just short on the vision on the high ground, so. They assemble a whole bunch of heroes over towards the mid lane, doesn't result into anything. Unknown, they're grouped up as a pretty large squad over in mid. I suppose it's buying time for mind control to farm up, but Lions, they're not really scared about this squad in the mid lane, because Jonas the Fan, Seal Kid, they're farming up the jungle top lane. Ancient Apparition is slowly but surely getting his Aghanim Scepter up, and he's actually very, very close to that. This is going to be one of the faster Aghanim Scepters that we have seen. He's already two parts in, and he's already holding onto 800 gold. Glimpse back on the River area is going to prompt the split from 8 Mother. I think there's going to be another split that isn't really going to do that much. Probably like the third or fourth time. And now that's a nice Ice Shard. Blocking completely everyone from Lions. Ice Blast is going to set... Uh, I mean, it's not going to do that much. Zoroji going to lay the Static Storm down. He has Phoenix support with the mech. Zoroji might actually get out of here alive. Yes, he will. But no, 8 Mother will blink forward and clap and get the kill anyway. That was kind of anticlimactic. But Magoma in the meantime trying to kill off Seal Kid. Walrus Punch will kill off the Witch Doctor. But it will be at the trade of the Phoenix. Here comes Slavian Mind Control, the heavy hitters. They're going to try to go for Ira and for 8 Mother at the same time. Mind Control cannot win that fight. 8 Mother is going to straight blink out of there. And they don't have enough catch up power in order to get back to this 8 Mother Brewmaster or onto the Slark. So. Everyone else is going to fall back. It's a two for one in favor of Lions, and it looks like there might be a little bit more. Era is going to run straight into mind control once again. Only level one mana break can't really do that much right now, and Magoma doesn't really have any ways of locking down the Slark, and that should just about be the end of it, I think. Yeah, Jonas the fans leaving, and I think they're done, but Lions should be pretty happy with how that went. Yeah, especially since the Ancient Apparition was able to just continuously farm throughout the entirety of that. This Aghanim Scepter is going to come out very fast, as you already said, probably in the next minute or two. Incredibly fast for Handskin as a support. He isn't really needed in person in all of those engagements. He throws out his ult, and that's pretty much his teamfight impact. Midas on Slark, off of cooldown, Era should look to um, activate that soon, and probably on this creep wave. Um, or just go into the jungle, that's fine too. Um, but he's going to be working towards the Scotty, getting that really soon. And Lions, even if they were at a disadvantage and Anti-Mage got a whole lot of farm, it's really easy to lock him down with the Doom, especially now that we're going to have an Aghanim Scepter on Jonas Sunfan. Once Doom is applied, Anti-Mage can't join the fight at all. Top lane, Hanskin gonna get a face full of Snowball. Polar Punch into the air is still alive, but not for long. They will bring him down. It looks like they will not suffer any casualties on the way out. Unless Slavi gets doomed, and it looks like he will not get doomed, but he will get the teleportation canceled anyway. Slavi is now doomed to fall. Uh, he has a lot of movement speed. Maybe, just maybe, if Ira misses another pounce, he'll get away? No. That was kind of hopeful, I suppose. It's going to be a Razor for Ancient Apparition trade, and that's never a trade that you want to be making. Even though it was just in time to shut down the Ancient Apparition from picking up his Aghanim Scepter, Unknown didn't quite know that, and they get sufficiently punished. Their retreat was a little bit too slow. Yeah, I, I'm going to call that one pretty much even. The Razor and the Ancient Apparition lose about the same amount of gold. They're saving up for the same item as well. Um, and honestly, I think that Aghanim Scepter on Ancient Apparition is going to be bigger than the Aghanim Scepter on the Razor as far as immediate impact is concerned. So um, I think that's okay that Unknown, unknown lose the Razor, but just not a trade that they really want to take at all. Um, Intimage is farming in the meantime. Vladimir is offering up as well as now a Yasha. Mind Control is starting to pick up quite a lot of momentum. We'll have to see if it's actually going to accomplish much. If they do win a fight convincingly, they can take a Roshan pretty easily. Anti-Mage just by himself with the Vlads can do it pretty effectively, especially if a Frozen Sigil is inbound. The problem is Anti-Mage is the only person on Unknown getting any sort of farm. If the net worth 
chart showing the way it is. Razor is starting to fall a little bit behind, as he said, going for the same build as the Ancient Apparition, and he's not really doing a fantastic job of building it up so far. Uh, everyone else on Unknown, I guess they don't really need that much gold. Like, Tusk doesn't need anything, Phoenix doesn't need anything. So, the lack of gold isn't really going to be hurting him that much, but still, it's not a situation that you want to find yourself in. Magoma Mind Control, they're going to go for the Roshan, and with the Blads, they will take this one very slowly, but very safely. And it looks like Lions don't know what's going on. They're going to instead try to go for a Phoenix up towards top. The poor, poor Firebird might be getting doomed right now. Actually, no, Doom is Doom is not here. That was the Brewmaster smoked up. And Kafka's going to survive, so I suppose it's a successful Roshan sneak from the unknown side, giving Mind Control a second life. That's going to be a pretty nice win for them. Yeah, I definitely think so. Double Titan Shroom picked up by Magoma. If there was anybody near um, to be at the receiving end of that Walrus Punch, could have been impressive, but um, yeah, Lion's just uh, missing the cue that they're going for Roshan, and now they're going to be able to snag that for themselves. Anti-Mage is getting quite a bit, but Forever Adam, he's picking up. Slark is also working towards one for himself. Currently has the Orb of Venom on the Courier. All he needs is... Um, 1400 gold or so till he has that completed second ultimate orb and then we have the scotty up for era lions it's feeling like something's bubbling under the surface and they can look to take fights and they could also passively farm on these Midases. jonas and van has the agonim scepter completed as does handskin so for every item unknown get lions get two hail hydra i suppose but uh mind control and Slavi, they're going to look towards the mid lane. As powerful as Antimage is right now, he doesn't have enough to actually be ganking anyone just yet. Needs a basher or a hero with lockdown, and Razor is clearly not a basher, so that's not going to be working out. Antimage needs to get some sort of way to assassinate targets. Once he gets that going, then the game is going to be a lot easier for Unknown. Their Antimage is going to be at least having the option of stopping the farm and starting the hero killing, and that's pretty much what you want to be doing with an anti-mage that you're reliant upon 100%. He's going to try to go for top lane, or no, he's just going to try to farm it. Everyone's farming right now, and lions are farming faster, so I think that pretty much says everything. Yeah, more or less. Right now, the anti-mage, the mantis style would allow him to kill the supports pretty effectively if they're caught out solo, and that is pretty likely since they do want to be um, looking for a little bit of farm by themselves, especially the Ancient Apparition, um, but Steel Kid is the easier kill if they're able to connect with that one. Ancient Apparition Ice Blast flies through mid and does land on the Magoma, which is going to be annoying to the Tusk, probably forcing him all the way back to base since he doesn't have um, any earn charges to sustain him, so he is sent to the well but won't die to this. And yeah, this is going to let the Unknown side know that the Aghanim Scepter upgrade is up on the Ancient Apparition, though it's not really going to be that useful of intelligence since you don't really play around the ancient apparition old like that like the game plan is always don't get hit but now it's just extra don't get hit so it's uh, gonna be an inconvenience for unknown they don't know that the Jonas of Fan doom upgrade is up yet but they will soon find that one as well Mind Control going pretty aggressively towards the witch doctor will shred him down with the mana void to get the kill that's an easily done kill by Mind Control doing it solo and has the rest of his team behind him so it looks like they're gonna transition that kill into a tier 1 tower so, uh, pretty nice pickoff. Witch Doctor is the hero that's not getting any farm for Lions, so it's probably the only vulnerability in their lineup right now. Yeah, this is kind of the game plan for basically unknown. Look for those vulnerable targets, whether it's the Ancient Apparition or Witch Doctor, so mostly the Witch Doctor, as you've already said, and then try to put as much map pressure as possible. This um, Aegis on the Antimage currently is allowing them um, to go that aggressively, but they do get the tower um, taken in mid lane as well as Lions secure that tier 1 mid, which is arguably more important than tier 1 up towards top. Both teams are going to continue continue on to the relevant tier 2s in those lanes, and it looks like it might just be a straight up trade. Neither team really wants to fight into the other one. And this is actually going to be pretty nice for Unknown. They uh, are going to take the tower, and they actually might have enough time to fall back for a defense. They are just force the high ground, pressure someone to come back. Either way, it's going to be their victory. Ira is going to get caught with some ice shards, and a glimpse back is going to land onto Jonas the fan. He is going to get hit with Static Storm and the Anti-Mage Focus. There's a Supernova as well, which is zoning everyone else out from the Lion side. They can't really join the Brewmaster in this fight, which may prove to be a victorious play for the Unknown side. They're going to Snowball forward, trying to go for Hanskin with Anti-Mage in that Snowball. Hanskin is going to take a lot of damage. He's going to try to be out. That's not going to happen. Brewmaster, where did he go? He's going to be hit with the Sunray as soon as he leaves his main form. Is there anything to interrupt this? Yes, there will be with the Mana Void. Eight Mother now completely surrounded, and he's also going to be brought down. And that is going to be a clean 3 for 0, plus a 2 for 1 tower trade for Unknown. That's the type of play that they actually needed, and they still have the Aegis on the Anti-Mage. In Unknown's previous games, they've always been falling behind in these early stages, but they always make it up, 
and then some with these team fights, and I think that's what we're going to be seeing here today. Yeah, Antimage currently sitting on another 3,000 gold on top of this already um, finished Mantis style Battle Fury Vlads, and they're going to put some tier 2 tower pressure in return in mid. Lions just aren't positioned and can't really defend this. Their pushing power isn't the greatest, but Antimage with Mantis style is enough to take down this tier 2. If they had the Agnum Scepter on Slavi, it would have been even faster, but still, unknown find a huge wins. All of a sudden done, it's 3 for 1 towers and 3 for nil and kills. And now they do have the Aghanim Scepter on Razor. Got delivered halfway through that tower destruction. Eye of the Storm is going to be up in another 5 seconds. They're going to rotate down towards the bottom lane. Mind Control is going to lose his Aegis very, very soon. However, he's low on mana, so I suppose he will get some value out of the item. This might be a little bit too aggressive from Unknown, pushing out this far into the enemy tier 2s. But they're feeling pretty good about themselves right now. They have a double damage rune on Razor. They need a Supernova, though. Supernova... Probably not going to be the highest damaging skill, but it's something scary that lions don't want to fight into, and sometimes it's all you need is also a tool at shutting down Brewmaster. Don't really know how reliable that's going to be, but it worked out pretty well, so Supernova as a zoning tool is going to be pretty darn useful for Unknown. If they have the Supernova in a good position, then they can just instantly win fights off of it. However, up towards top lane, Slavi is going to get jumped, and with an Ice Blast, that is fatal. Yeah, not much you can do here. It's going to be chased down with the Scotty, paralyzing cast bouncing through, and he is going to shatter down to the Slurk. Um, Lions, they do have a lot of aggressive pickup potential between the newly completed Shadow Blade on the Doom, as well as the Blink Dagger on the Slurk, and Lions want to find these isolated, sporadic pickoffs whenever they have those cooldowns online. Jonas Sunfan was looking for somebody, um, but doesn't end up finding it. Was probably hoping for the Anti Mage. With Aghanim Scepter, um, killing him off is pretty darn easy. You can just give him the rundown after the Doom cast. Oh, and he's going to find the Antimage in the end. Mantis style going to cancel it the first time. Now he gets a little bit of space. Polar Punch disengage, and Antimage is going to be A-OK. -okay. In fact, Jonas Fan taking a lot of damage from Magoma. The Phoenix dives right into the Snowball, actually. And now he's going to try to go for Jonas Fan. That Sunray was weird as hell, but Jonas Fan taking a lot of dot damage anyway. Gets Glimpse back, and the Doom is going to fall. Static Storm will take the kill. Now the Supernova is going to try to force 8 Mother out. Will not be successful in saving their Disruptor. But Kefka is going to have another Icarus dive out of here. 8 Mother and Ira cannot kill off Kefka if he Icarus dives like right now. Now. There we go. He's going to get himself to safety. Actually, no, Era is going to jump right on top of him. There's a Sunray trying to get Kepka a little bit more space, but that's not going to work through the tether. And now it's going to be Razor to get thrown up into the air. Has Era and the Brewmaster to worry about. Has Magoma in order to blink Snowball for a little bit more time. He's going to have to do that like right now. He's going to throw him into the air though, and he can't do it anymore. Slavi's going to be dropping. Era taking a pretty large hit from the Mana Void. Anti Mage giving them the rundown. And with the Urn Charge, that will be a kill on the Slark for Magoma. They're also going to snowball forward for 8 Mother. That should be another kill as Hanskin is going to TP out of there. Will be just fine. Seal Kid, maybe not as lucky. In the meantime, 8 Mother dueling up with the Magoma. The Sigil is locking down this Brewmaster so hard, but he does have a Blink Dagger and he will use it. Mind Control has a Blink Dagger with a lower cooldown though, and he's going to be giving chase, especially with Zeroji closing in. Gets the Lightning Strike, so he has Vision for a Glimpse back, and he will bring him right back into nothing because he popped a BKB actually. 8 Mother is going to be A-OK -okay right now. Still, the score is even, however, and Antimage really wants this kill. Might be going a little bit too deep, though, because Doom has his ultimate cooling down in 10 seconds, and Mind Control is not where he wants to be right now. He is just going to fall back, go back to farming up his Ancients, as well as a couple of other camps on the way there. So not really much lost from the Antimage. That is your complete basher, but I've seen this story before. It didn't work out well for Lions the first time around, but this time, Mind Control is purely solo. The Aghanim Scepter on the Doom is refreshing that Doom, constantly on Mind Control and taking quite a lot of damage. But with the mech, is now the Static Storm Kinetic Fuel comes out to Joe's Sunfan Walrus Punch. Onto the Doom as well. They're going to get the Snowball forward. Sioka dropping low. The Plasma Field finishes, uh, finishes him off as Slavi secures the double kill. Antimage still ticking down to the Doom. That is going to be fatal unless they're able to heal him with the Urn Bottle. It's still going to kill him. There you go. So close. So close yet so far. Oh, uh, that was an easy deny if they were just going to say, okay, Antimage, you're dead. We're going to deny you. Would have been cut dry easy, but. Instead, they end up giving a little bit more cash to the Doombringer, and that's not exactly what you want to be doing because that was an avoidable kill. Yet, still unknown, take a pretty good trade. Giving up their anti mage for two kills is going to benefit the other heroes so much, and these heroes are actually starting to become more and more relevant. We have almost a Lincoln Sphere on Kefka, so anti Doom tech is coming up for him. Blink Dagger has been up on Tusk for a long time. He has another 1800 gold in the bank, and Razor is going to be going for a Shiva's Guard for himself. So, suddenly the Slark not hitting as hard. So, unknown, they're taking some pretty massive team fights after all said and done and you would think that lions just have so much raw power that they'll be taking the team fights up in the uh, upper hand anyway but 
Unknown, they're playing these fights out really, really well, and Anti-Mage is getting a lot of benefit off of it. It really is. And right now that BKV on the Brewmaster, though it was a necessary choice up against the Disruptor, is also going to become less reliable, as we're going to have an Agon Scepter up on Zeroji and 1500 gold, um, which for uh, position 5 support does take quite a bit of time, but it is going to be, be coming up soon. And Lions, they just don't have any tools to really deal with that. Popping the BKB preemptively is probably the best way around it, but um, even then, it's not very reliable. Alright, so Roshan going to be respawning and pretty much a maxed out timer so unfortunately for lions they do have control of the map right now it's not going to be control for much longer unknown they also have all their cooldowns available uh, exception of eye of the storm which will be up very shortly they're actually positioning themselves like they're looking to smoke up right now do they even have a smoke well they don't so good luck smoking up without smoke that's not, probably not going to happen but they will move towards the roshan pit expecting a roshan fight Unfortunately for them, they are completely 100% spotted out right now. And Jonas the Fan is also going to open up with the Doom on Slavi. Not the best target, especially when he can't stick on the Razor. This Doom might not actually be doing anything at all. The Phoenix is going to get himself up to the high ground. I think this is fine since there's no vision. But in the meantime, Era is going to pounce forward for Slavi. Still doomed up. Gets put into the Snowball for a little bit more safety. But I don't know if that's going to give him enough. Snowball going to go all the way up over to the right. Going for 8 Mother in the end. Phoenix still on the high ground. Now going to Supernova. Perfect positioning for that one. Is going to be hitting everyone while they're all burning down. Seal Kid's going to hit with the explosion. And now they're all stunned. However, Antimage is in the air. He can't capitalize off this at all. There's another Sunray. And Era is going to take quite a bit of damage. Phoenix trying to go for this Slark. Another Snowball. First hit bash. Era is going to be going down. No. Shadow Dance. Justin time gonna buy himself a little bit more safety ice blast comes through gonna hit onto absolutely no one but slark is able to get himself out of there just in time my control now hit with the drunken haze a mother in hot pursuit but he cannot pursue the chase any longer in the meantime jonas fan found himself a double damage rune is gonna go after zeroji glimpse not gonna come out in time and the doom will get the kill now magoma is also gonna try to tp out he will leave and will be safe but it's overall a beneficial fight for lions it's not over yet kefka gonna try to tp out from the roshan pit he will be able to escape but Enough Lion heroes are alive. They're going to go into the Roshan pit. Even with absolutely perfect positioning from the Phoenix Supernova, it just wasn't enough. There wasn't anybody close to really do anything off of that Supernova. Anti-Mage Illusions are going to scout out this Roche, but it's just not going to happen. Unknown also fly their courier over a Dire Creep Wave and get that killed. So not something that you want to have happen and a little bit of extra something um, for Lions to be happy about getting a whole lot out of that last fight. Anti-Mage is still stacked, but... It doesn't really matter as much if they're not actually able to do anything with it. Mind control didn't really feel very present in that last fight. That's because I think mostly it was just 8 Mother constantly putting the anti-mage up in the air. And without a BKB or something like that, then mind control is not going to have any answer to that pretty much ever. And right now, Unknown, they need their anti-mage always hitting. He needs 100% uptime for those right clicks. Otherwise, they're simply not going to win those fights. And if you want an example of that, Exhibit A is the fight that we just saw. Anti-Mage was not able to hit, and even though everyone was stunned for... How long does it stun for, anyway? Two seconds? It does, definitely seems like a lot longer, but everyone was stunned by the Supernova, yet there was no damage going into the Lion's side after that, so... Their Anti-Mage needs to get some sort of protection item right now. It looks like he's going to be going for Abyssal first, so... He's going pretty much full-on Glass Cannon. That might be useful in some situations, but in those massive team fights with Brewmaster split available it's not going to be the best uh, not going to be the best item their dream scenario is pick off the brewmaster with static storm first and that's certainly possible with disruptor yeah i'd like to see um mind control go for a bkb after the basher um maybe even as to ship away the vlads as unfortunate as that is um just to make sure that he has the tp slot as well but um only time will tell what mind control actually settles on with the lincoln spirit completed on the phoenix as well as a potential bkb for the anti mage oh my goodness which doctor didn't live very long it is going to be a full up of discipline after that yeah, so now he's able to assassinate quite a few targets. Killing off Slark still is going to be a little bit difficult. Maybe with some really lucky bashes and help from like the Tusk or the Disruptor or something like that, he'll be able to kill him off. But there are some pretty darn tanky heroes on the Lion's side. And as great as Abyssal is for dealing damage, he needs a little bit more, I feel. Or at least it's very going to be very close. So the Witch Doctor wanders into the wrong place at the wrong time, is not going to spot the fact that Anti-Mage has this Abyssal. It might be Jonas and Fan to be the first one to realize it. Do they have True Sight here? Phoenix up on the high ground again has a gem. So they do have gem vision for the Doom, but they have to have the Phoenix in the right place at the right time. Era also messing with Slavi just a little bit. This Razor 
doesn't really have any useful items on him. Plate mail would be fantastic on his person, but that's unfortunately not going to be the case. Yeah, it's going to be going for the Shiva, this card. Still quite a bit of um, gold away from that pickup. It is going to be Lions on the hunt. The Shadow Blade and the Doom is going to wear off. They don't find a Doom onto anybody, and for now, um, the fight isn't going to happen. Basically unknown or far enough away from where Lions are currently hunting to where they're not going to get spotted out. And now we see Retaliation Smoke from Unknown. Unfortunately, their Razor apparently missed the memo. But they're all going to be going towards the north, and actually Kefka, he's going to be falling back. He will spot Ira. He does not know that the rest of the team is there, however. Ira is charging forward by himself. I think they should know what's going on right about now. Sunray to get Phoenix over the little cliff. But now Phoenix is in a weird position. He has to teleport out. That's Radiance not a TP you want to make, but either way, smoke for smoke, and Radiance Lions end up getting a tower for it. So I guess that worked out for them. Deny is not going to come out from the Radiant side as the creeps are just a little too strong for that. There was a whole slew of them um, at that mid-tier 2, and so I suppose it does favor Lions after all is said and done. Um, Tusk, he currently has an ultimate orb for him. What do you think Magumba is going for? Is this another Lincolns for Mind Control, or is he just going to be building towards a really late scythe? I think it's probably just him loading up on Lincoln Spheres. If they keep that spell block effect on the Anti-Mage at all times, that's probably the most cost-effective way that the supports can help out their anti-mage uh, unless they want to pick up Vlad so that my control can sell it which maybe down the line is going to be the way that they build but for right now it's got to be a Lincoln Sphere. Scythe would be okay but it's way too expensive. Fair enough. As far as lions are concerned we've kind of stalled out from both sides. It's a slight advantage towards them. 3,000 in the gold experience is completely evened out but it doesn't really feel like either side has clean control over this game in its entirety. Basher picked up by the Slark is going to be a worthy pickup for Yura, but... Wait, wait, I could have sworn he had a Basher earlier. No, never mind. Um, he went for the BKB. And right now with BKB, soon to be Basher, unfortunately doesn't have it on his person, but once he does have that, then this Slark is going to be able to dual Anti-Mage pretty decently. Uh, evasion is going to be important for Anti-Mage down the line. I'm sure he has his eyes set on a Butterfly or something like that. Vlad's... TP scroll can both be upgraded and or replaced, so Anti-Mage, though he is pretty darn farmed right now, still quite a ways away until he's completely 6-slotted, and then I think Unknown as a team are going to be pretty much capped out. As far as large items after the Anti-Mage is 6-slotted, there aren't that many aside from general aura items and this Aghanim Scepter from Disruptor. Yeah, there really isn't. For Alliance, they have plenty of slots to... Pick up for Jonas Sunfan, like a refresher for the Doom would be wonderful. Shiva's guard, they have an Assault Grass in the work for the Brewmaster. And he can become a very threatening right-click hero in his own right, the Brew, just with the innate crit. Um, as well as just his tankiness up towards top, potentially looking for a Doom onto the Anti-Mage. A blink away from AM might have just secured his death, but they aren't going to go for it. The Ice Blast did miss. Here is still coming in, and Mike Joel wants to fight. He's going to turn around onto Jonas Fan, drop him down to half HP through the BKB. He goes, stun finally onto the Anti Mage, but it's a little bit too late. Jonas Fan going to BKB and try to run away. A Seal Kid with his ultimate doing quite a bit of damage, but Snowball once again saving the day. Also, the Supernova going to stun up Ira and Hanskin both. So far, a two for zero. Eight Mother in the middle of the fight going to try to go for Zoroji, and he will put a lot of damage to the Disruptor, but not quite enough. Ira going to jump onto Slavi, now changing the focus to the Razor. They will kill off that hero as Zoroji, stunned up by the Rock, is going to hit with an Ice Blast that will be fatal. And Magoma also get hit by that. He puts himself into the snowball right now as Anti-Mage is going to try to hunt for the a for AA. He will get that kill, but it's going to be paying the price of Magoma in the process. Ira and 8-Mother still going to town on everyone. 8-Mother is now going to resume his main form, but so far it's a 3-for-3. Three three. And Anti-Mage, he's going to split and now try to duel up against Ira. That's not a fight that he's going to be winning. Mind Control has to fall back. Overall, an even fight, I suppose, although it's still... Very sketchy, this situation. Unknown, I just feel like they're barely hanging on. Definitely. Right now, that Phoenix saved Unknown's Bacon in that last fight. Level Death was casted by the Doom onto the Anti-Mage, looking to pop a Lincoln Sphere, but Phoenix actually put it on immediately after the level Death and right before the Doom. He doomed the Lincolns there. Wow. that's I did not realize that was happening in all of that, but that's the play that is the best possible play like that's the one that you put into the textbook and you say you're probably not going to be doing this that often but when you do it's going to be sweet and once the, the tusk picks up his then the chances of them blocking both of those skills is going to increase so mind control it's all about protecting the anti-mage he has now his bkb up he's going for a fairly fragile build this anti-mage but i think so far it's working out decently for him he needs a little bit more damage now he needs to ship out this vlads he needs someone else on his team to pick it up 
and I think he needs a butterfly. Or maybe an MKB expecting a butterfly down the line for Slark, but either way, my control, he needs a little bit more damage. Yeah, I think that's fair. Right now the AM is pretty much at his peak, and usually when AM gets his 6 slotted territory or close to it, right now it kind of feels like he should be dominating the game, but he's not. He was more or less just forced to run throughout that entire engagement. If he was doomed, it would have been all over. Shadowblade, Jonas Sunfan going to bump into the Tusk. Blink away will keep Tusk safe, and Jonas Sunfan is going to pull out. Nice blast, gonna fly, not connect. Roshan, though, up in 30 seconds, and Lions are in a perfect position to actually take that one. Everyone has all of their ultimate cooldowns available, so unknown. If they do get wind of this Roshan, they will be able to crash it. There is an Observe Ward here for the Radiant side, so odds are if Roshan spawns and Lions go into the pit, then unknown will be in hot pursuit, but I don't really know if this is going to be a fantastic fight for them. They need another position like they had previously with the Phoenix. If they have another Supernova on the high ground, man, that can instantly win them the fight, but the fight is going to be coming very soon as Roshan now is alive. Fresh Shiva's Guard on Razor, gonna help out, but not going to be a hugely swingy item. They're gonna smoke up, and now they're gonna look for blood. Kefka, unfortunately, just used his Sunray. Don't really think it's gonna make much difference. This might be one of the last fights of the game, actually. It very well could be, depending on how it goes down for either side. Currently, Brewmaster is sitting inside the Roshan pit. Pit is going to blink up to the high ground, and it looks like neither team is actually going to clash. The smoke on the radiant side is going to wear down very shortly, and now Lions looking for a wraparound inside the Roshan pit. Unknown are going to look for this Roche very quickly, and they can take it. Ancient Apparition Ice Blast is flying over the top, and it's going to scout this out. Lands onto, at the very least, mind control, but nobody else. And for now, both teams are posturing, but nobody's actually taken the bait. And in these situations, usually there's one hero who's AFK farming, whether it be an Ancient Prophet, a Spectre. This time it's going to be an Ancient Apparition, so I suppose Lions get a slight advantage during all of this one. Mind Control, though, at this point is strong enough to solo Roshan, so Lions, they cannot leave this Anti-Mage alone. They cannot leave this Roshan pit alone for much longer. Aimother's going to jump right in. He's going to keep his split intact for now as they go for the uh, seal kid right now my control is going to take that kill but it's a minor kill at the very least now the supernova up on the high ground my control fighting up against everyone and their mom supernova is going to explode stunning pretty much everyone once again but where's the anti-mage right now he's on the high ground and he's going to get oh not doomed just yet my control is going to blink out of there just fine right now everyone's still very healthy slavi being chased down by brulings anti-mage running away from the slark gets bashed down though has another blink out not doomed just yet I can't believe everyone's still alive right now, but Slavi might be taking a fall soon enough as he's going to get a little bit of help from Magoma. Shiva's guard plus Snowball. Eight Mother is going to be hit with a Snowball. Slavi is out of there right now. Another four staff forward. Eight Mother still can't connect onto Slavi. He will try to escape, but he won't. He will be brought down. I can't believe only a two for one. All of that and only three heroes died. It's incredible. Doom didn't actually use his ultimate through that engagement. But pretty much everything else was thrown out from both sides. Um, yeah, that's quite impressive. Um, but yeah, Roshan is going to be scared by Lion, so I suppose victory for them since they come out on top as far as kills are concerned and now have a double life for Yura. Well, they might be losing Jonas and Fan right now. The Vision is there now. He's going to be forced into the BKB. Where's the Anti-Mage? It seems like the Anti-Mage is always just not here. He's going to get the Bash onto Jonas Fan right before the Doom. Now he gets Lincoln Sphere blocked. And they will kill off the Doom for free. Jonas the fan don't really know what he was doing there, but Mind Control just laying into him. We'll tie up the score, or tie up the kill score after that previous fight. And, uh, well, it was pretty narrow. Doom, unfortunately, just can't get his Doom off convincingly versus Mind Control with so many Lincoln Sphere effects around. And that's really slowing down the Lion side by quite a bit. But still, this Slark is getting pretty ridiculously big. Not farming as fast as the Anti Mage. He still has an Aegis slot to fill eventually. But Slark is almost 6-slotted as well. My control is going to be packing the butterfly soon. And Slark has to be going for an MKB. Yeah, there's not really another clear option for Eric. He might consider going for evasion for himself, but um, outside of that, I don't really think there's another goal for him. A known currently sitting on a stacked anti-mage, and they just can't accomplish anything with it. They're playing on the defensive, and right now, they really like to be pushing up high ground, or even ending the game at this point. And they're pretty much going to be topped out. Shiva's guard on the Razor has been his only item in however long. They're going to find Seal Kid, and they will kill off the Witch Doctor very quickly. 
But they now have a full scale team fight on their hands. Sunray gonna fly through, heal up mind control a little bit. He's gonna try to fight up against Ira and everything else as well, but he has to blink out of there. Kefka does have a supernova. But up against Ira, that's not really gonna work out too well. Slavi getting hit with a boulder, and now he's gonna get abandoned by his team. He's going to fall as Razor has been eight times previously. Make it nine for him. Eight Mother's going to claim that kill. Lions trade once again pretty well. Razor, Core, a Witch Doctor. And they have Slark still with a double life. They could go for high ground right now. They definitely could. Right now, no one are going to be hard pressed to defend here. We have that Doom um, available still. And if that gets landed on a key target, it could all be over for Unknown, especially if that targets the Anti Mage. Um, Lincoln Spheres Galore are being applied to him. We still don't have that one finish up by the Tusk. It's still just the Phoenix um, putting that blue bubble around mind control, but that needs to absorb something big, either the Abyssal from Slark or the Doom from Jonas Sunfan. Well, right now, their tier 3 is being beaten down. Ira is going to jump forward, trying to go for the disruptor. No static storm in this fight, as Magoma is also going to take a lot of focus, finding some solace in the snowball. Supernova also might explode on Ira and 8 Mother. Ira, at the very least, is going to get hit by that. Now, can they kill off the Slark? Shadow Dance, it's going to be there in time, and he also still has the Aegis. Ira is going to be A OK. -okay. So far, two heroes down as they're going to try to pick off this Slark, but that's not going to happen. He's going to be juiced up to full in no time. And Lions, they force out pretty much everything from Unknown. They get a couple kills, and now they're free to fall back. Yeah, there's not really much else that they need to do. Lions, still sitting on that Doom cooldown, haven't found an opening yet, but they don't really lose anything for it either. The Aegis is still up on Slark. It's just time to <clears throat> refresh and reload and go for that push again. And when they do, it will be without a Supernova on the other end. Not the Illusion. highest cooldown skill, two minutes about. For that one, but Kefka, he really needs that as a zoning tool. I don't think he's actually had the supernova popped yet, or has had it broken by the enemy, so that's kind of nice for the Phoenix, but he's getting them off, and it's every single time it happens, it's just there's no follow up, and they need to make good off of that stun, because it is a stun that goes through BKB. Yeah. It's going to be really hard to find that positioning on the high ground, but it could be crucial. If they're going to win a fight, um, Supernova is probably one of the bigger reasons that they do. Um, Blink Dagger on the Phoenix is going to help quite a bit with that. Between Icarus Dive and Blink Dagger, Phoenix is going to be all around the outskirts of the engagement, which is exactly where Phoenix wants to be. Um, but at the very least, they're going to lose a tier to tower towards top. No defense is going to be mounted there, as Lions can pretty much take any tower outside of high ground. Um, at their leisure. Choo Choo Tower down in bottom is already very low and probably is the next one on their mind. And that one should be pretty easily done as well. Unknown, they really can't afford to fight outside of their base. There's no reason to, so therefore they probably won't. Maybe they're going to be putting themselves in a compromising situation over towards mid because they're being sandwiched right now. Magoma's Roji fully in sight and there's Jump in 8 Mother Era going to annihilate the disruptor once again. No static storm. Ice Blast will not connect onto anyone in the meantime. They're going to be chasing down for Antimage, who's doomed. He can't do anything. He's going to try to kill off Handskin, but he's not going to make that happen either. He does have a buyback, but he's going to have to use it. Magoma is also going to be bashed down by Era. 3 for 0 so far. Lions find perfect initiation. They force out one buyback on the Antimage. Tusk also has his. He's probably going to have to use it, even though he really, really doesn't want to. There's a double damage rune on this Slark. That will kill the rest of this tower off. And the rest of Lions working with a split. No Doom just yet, but they're going to actually get initiation onto Ira. They will will not kill him. They will kill him off, actually. Aegis also timed out. Supernova in the middle of everything. Mind Control is going to jump forward for Handskin. Gets a hit bash after the Force Staff and will get a double kill off of that. Now going to go for Seal Kid. He sees the Witch Doctor and Witch Doctor has no way to get out of there. The Brewmaster also in his split form is going to be trying to escape. Maybe he blinks to the high ground, but if he doesn't, he will fall and the Sunray canceling the Blink Dagger once again. Eight Mother is also going to be dropping here. That's a four for zero now in favor of Unknown and the Crackback is not going to take that many structures, but it will force buybacks from Lions. It will. All it cost him was that buyback on the Anti-Mage. That timing, I'm not sure if that was lucky for Unknown, or just really, really well um, kept track of by them. You can't really ask for anything better. The Slark, his Aegis timed out mere seconds before he was bursted down by Mind Control. Abyssal Blade and that Mana Void did a number, but killing him twice just wasn't in the cards for them. If that Aegis was there, it could have been completely different. Alright, so right now for Unknown, they're going to push until they see the Slark come back. As soon as that Slark is back up, their push is going to be ground down to a halt. 8 Mother right now, he's annoying for sure with his evasion and the mischance onto my control, but it's not going to be the most dangerous thing right now. Unknown, they're going to try to go for this tier 3, then probably the range racks. I don't think they have enough for what it takes to go for melee. 8 Mother's going to blink forward, gets glimpsed back. 
and unknown they're gonna play it cautiously for now 20 seconds still until the slark is back up and well, they're gonna go for the big cheese they're gonna go for the big objective melee racks taking quite a bit of damage from mind control and with the cast not gonna be in time mind control will get doomed absorbed by a lincoln sphere effect and now he's gonna take the entirety of the mid lane and blink out of there alive a clean raxing from unknown and lions they really don't want to buy back on slark but it costs them big this game is so topsy-turvy. Two minutes ago, I wouldn't have expected this to happen at all. Aegis on the Slark, I thought, ah, that's probably a clean Rax for Lions, but now it's basically unknown to take this game by the horns. They've completely, I don't know, seized control of a seemingly impossible game for them. Um, Lions now smoking up, looking for some pickoffs. They won't have the Doom cooldown for, um, no, oh, scratch that, they have a refresher. So if they really need to do some, Doom somebody in the next minute, um, they can do so. But um, they'd really like to save it for the double Doom. So even if they do Doom a Lincolns again, um, it won't be as impactful. But still, the Phoenix's timing on those Lincolns applications has been really spot on. And that's just a testament to Kafka's skill, I suppose, just because it is a mind game it's do i cast it now or do i wait until level death has he casted level death do i know that fact what intelligence am i working with and i'm pretty sure like with the exception of that last fight over in mid when the anti-mage got picked off over here every single doom that's been thrown on the anti-mage has been blocked by lincoln sphere effect from kefka and that's just so huge you don't normally get this much value off of a lincoln sphere but He's getting a disgusting amount of value right now. Roshan is going to be the area where the next fight is going to happen in just 45 seconds. And unknown, maybe they're going to be a little bit too late to this. They're currently just chilling in their base. I think they're waiting for smoke. Um, yeah, it's another minute, smoke will be up. But in another minute, Roshan will be dead. So that's probably not going to work out too great for them. Moving out as a five-man team is dangerous. But sitting in your base as five is probably even more so. Yeah, there's just not really anything that you're accomplishing when you're uh, doing that, but uh, we'll just have to see. Lions still have control over this map, even though they've lost a lane of barracks. They still are putting a lot of pressure onto basically unknown side. Antimage is really the only one that can force out these lanes, and he's still lacking those boots of travel, which honestly I think Antimage um, should invest in. Right now, neither team is anywhere close to each other, but um, unknown, they're going to put the push down in bottom, potentially looking to take a tier 2 tower, or the very least pressure um, Lions from having to react. Well, Mind Control, if he somehow finds an angle to blink into the Roshan pit, and if he's all alone and unspotted, he can make short work of Roshan. The problem is, he doesn't really know what to drop. What do you drop right now? Do you drop a BKB because it's 7 seconds? It still is a decent amount of time to fight, but even if they kill off Roshan, the biggest effect will be that Lions don't get Hanskin, though. He's going to get found by Magoma. Polar punched into the air, then obliterated by the anti-mage, starting the fight with no ice blast. Lions already fighting a disadvantage. Aim either gonna jump right in. Abyssal effect, not quite there yet. Mind control just gonna go to town as they do use supernova once again on the high ground. This time it's gonna be Slavia over on the left side that's gonna get doomed up. The Brewmaster gonna try to clear away from the supernova. Will make it away most of the time. But Mike Troll is actually gonna jump in and assassinate the ancient apparition again. No ancient apparition for good now as Slavi still doomed up. Is not taking that much damage though. Now he's gonna be focused down by Ira Seal Kid. Magoma gonna get help with that chain stun, unfortunately, for the team. He will be taking a lot of damage from the Death Lord. Mike Troll gonna jump right in. He's gonna be surrounded completely though. Doomed up and brought down. He is no buyback for another two minutes and now it's only Zoroji and Kefka to survive. Kefka's gonna try to TP away. Zoroji not as lucky though. Lions they lose their ancient apparition twice but they kill off the anti-mage. His buyback status not up for another minute 40 and this is going to be free reign for Lions because they only have one buyback to worry about. They're going to push down the top lane at the very least. They should be taking at the very least a set of Raxes here. And I think they might even be able to take a little bit more. That is a minute and a half that anti-mage is not going to be anywhere close. Um, to these fights since he's going to be stuck in the respawn timer and that's also a Roshan that is available for Lions and after the buyback from the Razor maybe they go back for that one um, after taking a lane of Barracks that is. Barracks in mid has already fallen and now they can swing up towards top there's not really anything stopping them. Ira isn't the fastest of pushing heroes but has 16 stacks of the essence shift and is going to put a number onto this tier 3 tower now the melee Barracks up towards top are going to fall next. Two clean Barracks for Lions can't really ask for much more during that fight, the anti-mage, that second doom was really good by Jonah Sunfan. Both of them connecting and neither blocked by Lincoln Spheres. The Lincolns were put on cooldown very early on, very early on in that engagement. Dusk still hasn't been able to purchase up his. Bottom lane is going to force Lions back from going to that third lane of barracks, but still crushing victory for them. And they're going to get Roshan on top of it all. And they actually have enough heroes that are important to actually make usage 
of this Aegis and Cheese. I don't know who they want to give it to, but Ira, Eight Mother, or Jonasim fan. Hell, even the the Ancient Apparition could be pretty nice with the Aegis, just because he's always being focused by the AM. But it's going to be Eight Mother with the double life and Cheese right now for no one. Uh, Courier maybe he's going to deliver that to the Doom. Yeah, so now it's going to be so many lives worth of health pools for the lion side to work with and only one more racks to take unknown their best shot right now is to just try to take a miracle fight haven't seen a static storm actually do much lately because Zeroji has always been killed off in an instant but if he somehow gets that down then that's the type of skill that can win you the team fight thereafter if especially if you have a supernova and anti-mage behind it so unknown they're going to smoke up and I think try to go for a little bit of a Hail Mary pickoffs at this point are just going to delay the inevitable yeah, right now they kind of need to take a really crushing victory, and um, we'll have to see if they're going to be able to accomplish that. Lincoln's here is going to be replied to mind control, and they are potentially going to bump into Era. He's not the one holding onto the Aegis, so if they bring him down, it could be huge, but the high ground advantage is going to prove too much. Blink forward aggressively by Era, going to be polar punch up in the air, but Soroji's going to be dropped down incredibly low. The snowball going to delay that damage just to go further onto the back lines. The Wish Shocker ultimate doing a lot of work until it's cancelled by the um, Supernova coming out from the Phoenix. Nobody's dying. The first one to fall is going to be the Doom, buying back immediately as he wants to get off his ultimate spell. The Witch Doctor is going to be burned down <clears throat> by the Razor and the Eye of the Storm. Up in the air, the Anti-Mage can't really accomplish much. Going to Blink towards the back lines of this fight. Snowball again. They're going to go into Era this time around. Punch him up into the air, but still Era's not dropping low. Static Storm is kind of nice, but the Kinetic Field doesn't lock the Slark into place. Jones, Sunfan, and the Eight Mother are going to be annoyed by this, but still don't fall. Buyback from the Tusk. Phoenix is going to be picked off on the sidelines. That's Gem on the deck, although nobody picks it up immediately. Razor chasing hands, getting an absolute cluster of a fight that culminates into a one for one plus two buybacks. Disruptor going to burn down to the team, so I suppose that tips the scales in the favor of Lions, but only just. Honestly, it doesn't really matter what the score is because Lions, they took a better fight right now. And unknown. Oh, wow, that's not the doom that you want to be making. Jonas Van going to get picked off, punished for his mistake. Mana Void sealing the deal, but I don't think the fight was good enough for Unknown. They don't kill off the Slark. I guess they do force out the buyback from the Doom, which is nice, which means that the next time they take a fight like that, then it'll be much better for them. And I guess they live with the Anti Mage, so maybe that fight is not going to be completely decisive for Lions in the end. But it's still not the best fight for Unknown, though they do a fairly good job at kiting away from enemies. Like, Magoma's Snowball has been just an MVP for Unknown this entire time, saving his allies from Ira, saving his allies from pretty much whatever that was ailing them. And he's now going to get punished, though. Ira is going to close in Magoma. First hit bash, plus Abyssal effect. Polar Punch, going to try to get him a little bit of safety, but it's not going to work. He's in the Shadow Dance. Slark is also fluttered, moving at 522. Blink out from Mind Control. Still is being chased down. He's going to actually bring the Anti-Mage to Handskin. That's unfortunate for the Ancient Apparition, to say the least. But now AA is probably going to be brought down. First hit bash, not there. In fact, Mind Control is going to get bashed first. Now in the BKB, not really going to do too much, except for block a little bit of pack damage. He's going to blink right into 8 Mother. This Anti-Mage just can't catch a break right now. Forced to use a Blissel just to get a little bit more distance. Will teleport out. Seal Kid has a cask, and it will cancel Mind Control. He does have buyback, the Anti-Mage. But if he uses it, then Lions are just a hop, skip, and a jump away from victory. Yeah, and they are probably going to be forced to use it or lose entire Mega Creeps, which just isn't something to come back to. Maybe they can hold out against those supersized Mega Creeps, but um, winning the game is a completely different story. Agnum Scepter on the Phoenix might be a crucial pickup for them in the next engagement to keep Anti-Mage alive with a full kit all refreshed and uh, ready to go. But still... It feels like Lions have complete control over this game. Anti-Mage kind of needs to buy back now. They're TPing in with the Razor. Static Storm going to be dropped, but Kinetic Field doesn't lock anybody in place. They'll glimpse back here, but that's going to be disjointed by BKB. Jumping the high ground, Zorochi is going to pay for that. He gets bashed down by the Slark. Anti-Mage up in the air, can't do anything. He's going to get his Lincoln's pop by a boulder if they Doom him now. Could all be over. Doom is... Is Where is Doom? I have no idea. Blink on the sidelines. They're going to bash down Slavi, a secondary boulder, and the Razor is going to lose his life. Blink for by a clap from Ape Mother. They do get the Abyssal returned on the era, but now with the Witch Doctor Ultimate bouncing through, Mind Controls is taking too much damage and is forced to pull back after buying back. Pounds four. They are going to drop the Anti Mage into the bubble, but they're both going to die here as the Supernova fails. That might as well be game. I don't think they really had many other choices there, so. Going for that Supernova, not going to blame Kefka for that decision, but unknown, they just run out of steam. They fight back for much, much longer than I thought they would be able to, but at the end of the day, Lions have way too many heroes with way too much farm, and 
But uh, basically unknown slash aftershock are going to end up dropping game one. And because it is only game one, guys, we are going to be moving on to game number two shortly. Lions for aftershock slash basically unknown will continue. Lobby will be up very shortly. Hope you enjoyed the game and hope that you return for game number two, which will be up very soon. Don't go anywhere, guys. I'm Mike Loris. I've been joined by Grandis V and we'll be RB.